Emily Bell, Ron Morehouse, Ron Morehouse. Ron Morehouse. You know, Ron, I got to learn how to roll my R's. Uh, yes. So, um, but uh, you guys made a super cute, cool film, uh, Future Boyfriend. I'm going to just let it roll in the background as we talk. And, um, you know, guys, I was really surprised by by this film. It, it like... You know uh, this. You know you're our first sci-fi comedy sci-fi, and I didn't expect to be really emotionally moved, and no, I was. Cool. And uh, it, it's a, a really, I think, a deeper film than it lets on to be. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys about that. But first, um, you know, thanks so much for being on the show. You guys were nominated by Gareth Smith and Jenny Lee and other tag team duo filmmakers like yourselves, um, great filmmakers uh, like yourselves. And again, Future Boyfriend, super cute, very cool. So moving right on to the first question, and of course you guys can preface it with whatever you want, maybe to introduce yourselves or say something about the film. First question is make this film. And I don't mean like, you know, you guys wanted to get in festivals or this or that, like why this film, why did this speak to you? Why did you guys decide to go through blood, sweat and tears to do this project? Yeah. Go ahead. Why don't you start out? The lady of the group, please. Yes. <laughs> it started with our relationship that we uh, were in this as a play first. This is a one act play. It was a part of SciFest LA, which is a science fiction one act play festival. And uh, we were both cast in this, and we hadn't worked together before. And we really became fast friends. We, it just really clicked for us. Oh, really? And, mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's um, the first time you guys met each other, is working on this as a play. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And oh, we, uh, we How had, long ago was that? Uh, three, three years, years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's been three years. I know. Yeah. It's, time has flown. Uh, yeah. But we had so much fun working together on the play, and then we kept getting positive feedback. People saying things like, "Oh, we'd love to see more of these characters. We mm. want to see what happens next, or we'd like to see this as a film a TV and, show. or a TV yeah. show." And both Ron and I have been talking about how we had wanted to, before we met, produce something, just make something, and so this kind of fell into our laps. Yeah. And we were also, uh, we really enjoyed the story. It was written by A. Vincent Ulerich, and it had, you know, heart and sci-fi and both things that we love. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's kind of what started this whole thing. And it was also a new uh, opportunity for us to just kind of create our own stuff, our own content. We both have been actors for several years, and, uh, you know, it can always be challenging trying to find work and getting people to cast you in things. And we were like, we want to be responsible for our, our own careers and our own destiny. So we were like, let's make a movie of this. And we've been uh, fortunate to continue to reach stuff. It's been an incredible wild ride. We never mm -hmm. thought that Future Boyfriend, we got into the Tribeca Film Festival with this uh, for 2016. Right. Which was amazing. We really felt, felt like we, we got into like Yale or, or Princeton or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, sure, yeah. Yeah, and that, that kind of sort of galvanized our relationship in terms of like, oh, well, we actually have something here, and we, we actually, not only do we work well together as actors, but uh, as producers and, and making content. So we're like, let's move forward on, on other things. And so it's been really a wonderful opportunity, and yeah, it's been a real mm -hmm. treat. Really <laughs> yeah. Fun. Wow, that's awesome. So how did you, so that's kind of the logistics of the whole um, backstory, which is really interesting. Um, and then, like, what is it about this film um, that you guys connect with? What resonates uh, with you? Uh, for me, it's the love story. I really love the idea that, well, first of all, too, that this guy will fall, had fallen in love with an older woman. And that's so not a story that you hear in our traditional um, media. You know, it's usually mm -hmm. vice versa, the older man, younger woman. But this guy's so in love with the younger, with the older woman and uh, that, you know, about her character and their relationship that he's willing to travel back in time just to date her. And there's no guarantees. It's a one-way trip. So I was really moved by that, uh, their relationship and that this male character was willing to go so far for and this woman that he loves. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think it was more, I mean, all that stuff as well. But I love it's just a, a new spin on an old genre, on the rom-com drama. Um, I, 
rom-com. Uh, sci-fi rom-com, yeah. Uh, you know, I think just a, an, an original take on it. And it was something that I hadn't ever seen or uh, read before. So when we worked on it as a play, we just kind of got into it. And yeah, I was just sort of, I was kind of moved about its originality and just sort of, yeah, all that stuff. I, I never so know how to... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Ron, I cut you off. Oh, what were you going to say? Please, no, no, yeah, what, what Emily said. <laughs> And so what do you think thematically the writer was, or the script or the story is trying to say uh, about the themes that it's... Um... That, I think that, that, you know, that love is boundless, doesn't matter of, of your age or, you know, uh, love is love. And, and the fact that this guy um, is risking everything to go back in time to date someone he's fallen in love with in the future. Uh, I think it's, I think the idea of, of, of love is just really throughout the entire thing. Yeah, and, and also, you're right. <laughs> yeah, and also what? Yeah. Also, um, I like the I, the other theme in this. There's the love theme, but then there's also the science fiction theme. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the science fiction theme proposes in this is if you found out that your future was not what you had planned it to be or what you envisioned for yourself, what would you do? Mm -hmm. What lengths would you go to? Would you be willing to try and change it? And that's kind of scary, a scary thought, like, how am I going to do things differently? And uh, so I also appreciated that part of the story as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, you know, really what resonated, I think, with me most and why I really enjoyed it. And I found it unique and different. Um, you know, the, the guy going back from the future, um, you know, cute and whatever. But uh, and uh, but it's really uh, to me it was a, a really um, pretty poignant story about here's this woman who found out that her life didn't turn out how she wanted it to be. And, you know, here, you know, the actors, I don't know, 30 something generation and, you know, we're coming of age and you're coming to that age where, you know, hey, our hopes, dreams to be movie stars and rock stars and, uh, you know, stars of our own drama are like oh well, wait that's maybe not going to happen or hasn't happened and oh I wanted to have kids and oh that that didn't happen so that and wrestling with with that and what that feels like mm -hmm. and um, changing that and accepting it you know yeah. accepting it to change it you know how does you know I think those are the biggest uh, really deepest themes of this film for me yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the idea that, you know, God, you think your life is going to go a certain way, and it doesn't. And someone actually comes back and says, no, your life is much worse than you ever imagined it. And uh, dealing with that information. And in and, and the movie, you know, she kind of says, no, I don't, I don't want anything to do with this. And she walks away from it all. And then she kind of comes back and sort of realizes, okay, well, maybe this, this man can actually help me change my life and get a future that I never thought I would have. You know, it's sort of like that idea of, like, losing the plans and just kind of... Uh, going on yeah that's definitely something that's we have, as actors of course have no idea what it feels like to not have things go as planned right yeah so this is entirely uh fictional <laughs> i'm just kidding yeah. we totally understand <laughs> yeah. what it's like to not have our careers go the way that we originally envisioned and so i uh, that totally resonated with us as well yeah, and, and how do you deal with that? I mean, how do you guys deal with that personally, professionally, and and your guys' just, uh, career is going well? I mean, you know, making it into Tribeca, you guys just made it into Pli Tribeca as a blind submission. Yeah, 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 we did. Yeah. Um, well, that's yeah. how we dealt with it. Is we decided to produce our own work. Yeah, and that, that's what's been great about it too. So, yeah, I've been acting for several years, and for um, the majority of my career, I've managed to do okay. I'm not like on a series, but I've done a number of guest stars. I've done 50 national commercials. I've supported myself as an actor for many, many years. And That's the last amazing. Three, yeah, the last three years have been very difficult for me as an actor. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or what's what's happening, but I um I've been in a crossroads, and so this. This Emily completely changed my life in terms of having someone who was willing to produce with me and create content with me, and Likewise. I find it, and I find it so much more fulfilling and gratifying to be able to uh, do this and to control my career, not ask for opportunities all the time, and that's one of the things that I think I've grown so much, and I've grown up in terms of also learning how to work with people better. I think that you know, as an actor, you're always just kind of you're you, you can become insular and uh, almost egocentric in terms of like, oh, what am I doing? Do people like what I'm, I'm putting out there, but this is so much more in terms of 
teamwork and it's well experience. I, I'm, so, I'm so happy to have all this happen for me. Likewise, yeah. Yeah, a really empowering experience. You know, that's super cool. And, you know, that's it's amazing how this film mirrors what your reality is, your lives. I mean, that's you know. True. I yeah. really thought about that, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys haven't thought about that? Well, I mean, it, it's weird. I mean, I, mean, I responded to the play because it's it was uh, it was a comedic piece, and I thought the comedy was just so right for both myself and Emily and our. You got a great comedic touch, Rod. I mean, I love the the feeding her. I you know I was like, what is going on there? And then you get it right. It's real nice. You both got, guys have great chemistry. I mean, are you guys like? I gotta ask. I'm sorry if I'm intruding, but you know, I guess. Yeah. Is there like you guys totally professional? Yes, absolutely. Emily's married. Emily's married. Yeah. We have to, 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 to somebody guy. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's great. That makes it a lot easier, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Of course. We're, we're able to have a, a business relationship, and I consider Emily a friend as well. So mm -hmm. we can, you know, I ask her for advice on everything in my life. And uh, yeah, it's been. Likewise. Emily, so, yeah. We get that question a lot, actually. So. I'm sure you do. I'm sure. <laughs> Either that so, or brother sister so yeah <laughs> right right but you guys were saying that you know this uh i i feel like you guys were on a roll with some did did we lose a train of thought or do you know what no. you were saying you were talking about the whole idea of like oh how we didn't even think about it it was mirroring, mirroring yeah well you know it was interesting when i i was cast in side fest i was at first cast in a radio Play at it was he voices Homer Simpson, and we were in rehearsals, and Emily was an understudy, and mm -hmm. she came in. And I was like, oh, you know, we, we we were just chatting, and then that night we had gotten an email saying, do you guys want to do this play? It's called Future Boyfriend. It's like a twenty-five page play, and we both read it, and we're like, oh yeah, we didn't really know each other, but I was at that moment um, with doing SciFest for me was I, I I was kind of at a loss in terms of my career and, and where to go. Um, I'd always worked in, in theater, and so when we did this play, we were Emily and I were chatting about things we wanted to do, and we're like, hey, this would be a great idea to move forward as a film, mm -hmm. a short film we can do ourselves. And so, yeah, I, I didn't even really think about that. That until is so it, yeah, much like, like our characters. It, is, it like, really know, is. Changing our destiny, changing our life, taking control. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, on each other, like the, the teamwork and relationship that it takes to make those changes. Yeah. Is mirror yeah. as well. I mean, talk about, you know, life mirroring art and art mirroring life. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, what was I going to ask you guys? Um, well, I have something that came yeah. to mind. Uh, Ron, was talking about, um, <laughs> Ron was talking about the comedy in uh, the play, and I just wanted to uh, mention what a cool experience it was to be able to rehearse this as a play and perform it as a play before we shot it as a mm -hmm. film. And it really gave us an opportunity to explore different ways to make the jokes work, to um, play with, uh, you know, how we were going to do it and our take on it. And our director who did the play, Megan Fay, was no. a really talented comedic actor. She, She's in tons of stuff. You probably seen her. She was on uh, Mar the, um, Agent, yeah, she's, second, she's a Second City alum. Yeah. And she was really... Um, very uh, instrumental in helping us discover those things in the play version. And then our director, Ben Rock, uh, who did the film version, helped us take it even further. But it was, so it was one of those unique situations where we really got to get to the meat of it uh, before we even shot the thing. And what was great about that too is because we produced it, it was the first, uh, we were first time producers. So we didn't have to worry about our roles and the story that we were telling. We yeah. already had that with us while we went into production, pre-production, and that helped a lot so we didn't have to like, you know, learn two new roles. We could plan out our, our, our movie and stay on top of it without being distracted. And that was a huge thing. Yeah. yeah. There's so much I mean, involved. You guys did a great job producing it, great job acting it. I know what I was going to ask you guys. Um, so, you know, as as actors uh, and artists, um, you know, the work uh, that uh, we put out is judged by um, society. And if it doesn't have a mass audience appeal, then it can't get commodified and packaged into a product that's sold that will sustain uh, an artist as mm -hmm. a career. Mm -hmm. So if that dream of uh, you know making art as as a as a business or and a and a passion, um, but it has to be a, a business to be sustainable, right? Mm -hmm. If that doesn't pan out for artists, right? And you know you look at uh, 
historically, there's many artists that it hasn't panned out for that they've been recognized posthumously. So what what's an artist to do uh, in terms of how do they value um, themselves? Well, I mean, and their kind. Mm -hmm. I, Sorry, yeah. I read countless self-help books every yeah. day <laughs> to try to get to the heart of that. You know, I, 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 and an acting teacher said to me years ago, you know, when you go into the room for an audition, as long as you're happy with the work that you do, then it's a win for you. And I think that's really important. I think I'm so proud of the work that we have done together, uh, the work that we continue to do together. But that's, I mean, yes, I want to make money and I want to broaden my career and, and move forward. But that is a win. I mean, being able to create my own stuff and being able to, you know, put it out there in the way that, that we have, that is, that's a win. And, you know, I mean, we, Future Boyfriend is on several platforms now. It's been viewed hundreds, hundreds of thousands of times. We just got translated into Russia, uh, Russian yesterday, actually, and we already have 5,000 views in one day on our movie. Um, so it's been, yeah, and, so, and, we're, and we're making no money from this. It's not like we're making money to short film. But, you know, it's, it's a... Uh, it's gratifying, and, and hopefully, you know, um, Emily once she showed me this thing uh, that the Duplass brothers had called. Oh yeah, it's a, a YouTube video called uh, the. Um, well, it's Mark Duplass yeah, speaking at the South by Southwest conference yeah. a couple of years ago, and he talks about uh, it's called the Calvary isn't coming. And he talks okay. about with each thing that you do, you might make something, and it, do, it is a success. And so you're waiting for the Calvary to come, the, the agents, agents to call, the producers, the producers yeah. casting directors, but they don't come. So then you make something else, and then you're waiting for the Calvary. If they don't come. You make something else. Time you're waiting for the Calvary, and then eventually they do start to knock on your door. But he urges you to keep going and yeah. keep going and not not like sell out your rights or your uh, creative power at that point to just keep making your own stuff, and then eventually. The Calvary is knocking down your door, you are but at that Calvary, point, yeah. it doesn't matter because you are the Calvary. You're, yeah, and so it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I I love that. That's Me a too, yeah. story, and it's uh, yeah, it's 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 that idea of just keep it, you know, keep on going and going and producing, creating, and you know, you never know what might happen. I mean, I think when we first got into Tribeca, we were like, oh my God, we're gonna become stars. We're like, <laughs> we're gonna, you know, they're gonna want us, of course. Yeah. But you know, we went there and we had an incredible time, and we were we met some amazing filmmakers mm -hmm. and get to establish relationships that we still today um, are able to, to to turn to for help with our with our stuff. But you know, we didn't get like signed by CAA. You know, we um we had this great little movie, and so you know, and now and then we made a, a web series. Now our web series is going to be distributed on Amazon Prime November seventh, and you know that's great. But you know, we still haven't. No one's coming now. We have we're in uh, post on another short film. So now it's like now for now it's like okay well it's also Emily and I being like well what are we doing next do we maybe want to do a feature do we want to do something bigger mm -hmm. like it's kind of you know until we figure out that you know people come to us now and say hey we want you so it's like yeah and I think I think to sustain like being patient because it takes so much patience throughout that experience mm -hmm. is uh, for me it's about shifting focus it's instead of focusing on um, who's gonna want me who's gonna pick me uh, like. How can I? That is a concern, which which we both would like to be able to make money in this career. Yeah. But to try, um, whenever possible, to shift focus to what do I want to say? What do I want to contribute? Um, how, what kind of pieces do I want to do? And the input, what kind of impact do I want to have? And that fo keeping my focus, continually reminding myself to put my focus there, uh, helps sustain me through mm -hmm. all the other concerns. That's great. That's well, fun. I think you guys have. Yeah, it's, it's fun. fun. I mean, I yeah. love making movies. Like it's, I, I've been a, I've been more of a stage actor actually the majority of my uh, my career. But like, I love the community aspect of, of making films, and it's just fun. It's just it's high stress, but it's like it's when you have that movie that's done. It's like it's an incredible feeling. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I think you guys have your heads in the right place, and it sounds like your hearts as well. And um, you know, that's critical to keep keep going and and like you said Ron I think you know at the end of the day if you're putting out the work that you're proud of then that's really all that matters and it's satisfying the calling that you have in your hearts to do this work so you're doing yeah. it for a reason who knows whether that is yeah last question what has changed for you personally since doing this project and I mean how have you guys changed since doing the work I, I, I mean, I, I've changed, I think I meant to say, I've shifted the whole kind of, it's interesting, I, I think that um, when you're acting, it's, 
it's very uh, much a, a me sport. Trying to get, trying to get a when you're cast work. It's all about your fellow actors. It's not about you. But when you're pursuing a career as an actor, it's about how can I move forward? Who can help me out? And it's a very solo experience, and it can become a very lonely existence in many ways. And I yeah. think able to. Uh, had this partnership with Emily. It's given me someone who I can talk to, someone who I can share my hopes and my fears with, and it's kind of brought me out of myself. And it's a very um, important, wonderful aspect in terms of, you know, uh, just as, as I move about, you know, in life. So I'm no longer like, okay, oh God, I have this audition. How do I prepare for this? You know, I hope I get this audition. It's like, well, I have this audition, but I also have this project that I'm working on and being creative with someone. And that's so, I having a partner has changed so much about, about, um, how I go about it. it's just so much easier. It's like I, I have someone to like su for 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 support and and guidance. And it, no, but it's it's really it's really it's really wonderful. It's a yeah. really wonderful thing. And I think it's also rare because I think that also it's hard. Creative people are hard to partner with, and I think oh, uh, sure. yeah, you know, creative people, especially passionate people, have a lot of ideas. And it's hard to let the ego go. And I think what's great about Emily and I, and we Emily and I have gone through our bumps without a doubt. But I feel like we've come to a way of a language of understanding each other and, and kindness and dealing with, with with our problems that um, I'm really grateful for. So, oh, <laughs> it's hard to follow up. I mean, ditto. <laughs> and also, uh, I think empowerment is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, knowing that we can make, do do these things. I remember when I first heard what it what you have to do to. Um, make a short film, how to get sure to paperwork. And I remember permits. thinking to myself, and permits, I remember thinking to myself, oh, well, there's no way I could do that. And uh, and so then years passed where I just went on believing that. And now that we've gone through that, doing things that I just never thought that me, Emily, could do, uh, and knowing now that I can, um, I walk into audition rooms differently. Mm -hmm. I uh, just feel different moving in this industry. And I'm like, you know what? I don't necessarily need somebody to like pick me to participate. That, yeah, that, that's the, the number one thing. I, I, as an actor, you're always trying to ingratiate yourself to agents and cast and directors. And now it's kind of a pressure's a little bit off me being like, they don't have to pick me. I want them to pick me, but they yeah. don't have to. I, I have all these things going on and other projects that, you know, I'm thinking of and we're thinking of together that we're going to move on that are going to, you know, it's, it's putting us in a position to do what we want to do. And that's like, so empowering. It's so, it's so important as an actor, especially today with how many actors are out there. Um, there's way more than when I started, you know, 15 years ago when I went to USC, I was like, you know, there were lots of mm -hmm. actors reason in the last several years i think everyone is trying to be famous it's like the california gold rush people are coming out to la really wow but there's i mean the actors there's so many actors i mean there's just mm -hmm. way more actors there are people who want to be famous who want to try it you know a I lot of times it's because of the tv shows you know the reality shows reality shows yeah and, and, and the youtube channels and stuff like that yeah and so i think it's you know um it's important for actors to create their own work and 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 Kind of take back the yeah. take back the power. Take back the power. Well, you guys are doing it. I mean, you guys really. You guys have already accomplished a great deal. You know, with where yeah. you've gotten to. Absolutely, really respect what you've done. Um, this is a great, super cute film. I look forward to uh, sharing it with our audience, and um, I wish you guys the best of luck. It was just really wonderful interviewing you guys, and um, you guys are both a pleasure. And look, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, you keep putting it out there, you know, um, and good things will happen no matter what. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I, and I just like to shout out, like, there are so many people that helped us do. make. Yeah. Too. yeah. So like Ben Rock, ben Rock, Rock our I, director. I just want to say about him. He is. I mean, this movie would not be as successful as it as it was without him. He is a genius. He is not only did this, but he also has a, in a brilliant web series called Twenty Seconds to Live that you have got to look up. It's really. Um, okay. They're going into their uh, second season, but um, he is just kind of uh, you know genius behind all this, and he brought yeah. with him a team that really, I mean. Newer filmmakers, we locked out. We were so locked yeah, out. We did. Yeah, so like Kay's, uh, Al Al Kay's Altarecki, who's Alta our composer Recky. and yeah. sound designer. Tom Moser, who did the visual effects, which are brilliant. Uh, we George have George Foy, Foyce. who's our DP. 
and the brilliant French steward who we were so lucky to have in the oh movie, who makes a cameo as our little IO guy. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I thought he was recognizable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third from the sun. He's our mom, uh -huh. and uh, we were we're just and so then, lucky. And Abe Vincent yeah. Ulrich, of course, wrote Brilliant. it. And yeah. Um, yeah, great, great writing. Really enjoyed the writing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's all Vincent, and uh, and then of course, like our friends and our family contributed to our Kickstarter campaign. So we couldn't have afforded this without them. So it's really been a humbling experience as well. Yeah. Just how many people have come to make these projects happen. And I have to say just really quickly about the whole Kickstarter thing. Oh yeah. When Emily and I first started, we were like, will anyone give us money? We were like, yeah. oh God. And we felt so weird about reaching out for it. And we were amazed at how many people were giving us money, hundreds of dollars. We raised about $12,000 for this movie. And awesome. we it in five days. It was like, yeah. it was like five days. And it was like so wonderful to see people being like, "Hey, we want to help you. We want to help you. You know, they, we believe in your talent, what you're doing." And, and that's, um, uh, maybe sometimes when people go into something like this, they may think, "Oh, I don't know if I had that support," but it's like out there, and you don't even realize. You just it. don't know until you try. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys are both great. Um, you know, as actors and as people, and uh, producers too. So, uh, looking forward to your second uh, production. I know you guys have the web series that you're doing for Amazon. We're going to throw that out there as well. So um, look forward to more to come. Great. Thanks thank so you much. so much. It was an honor to be on here. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, please, an honor to have you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. All right. Bye later, guys. Bye. Thanks for Bye. joining us, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in this week. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and leave us a like and or a comment. It makes a big difference. Plate Forward is brought to you by Digipops, where we're building a community to put film and filmmaker discovery in your hands. Here, filmmakers and fans, the creative class, recognizes each other fairly and transparently through a community-curated film festival each quarter. It's coming soon. Thank you.